What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. My first time reporting to you guys from Las Vegas. I've been here three days now, but uh, this is the first time I've made a video. Since I've been here, I've gone 0 for 2 in tournaments. I'm down like $3,000, but we're gonna play some 510 here at Resorts World. Funny side note, I've never been in a poker room with more women than today. There's some like poker league women's tournament going on. The ratio is impeccable. There's probably more girls than guys by far in here. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty hilarious because usually it's like nine guys to one girl, if that. So if you guys are a girl and you are watching this video, leave me a comment down below. Let's see what kind of ratio we got going here at Wolfgang Poker. But as for now, we're playing 510 at Resorts World, trying to make some of those buy-ins back. A lot more fun things coming up. We have a few more 3K buy-ins. And then we're ending off this trip with the 10K main event, which of course we're going to win for $12 million. Let's freaking go. Appreciate all support. Let's get right into the vlog. Let's go. you guys we hop into the resorts world 510 for three thousand dollars in first hand of the night we look down at ace queen offsuit from the small blind a gentleman by the name of greg in the low jack position raises it up to thirty dollars the action folds around to me i'm in the small blind really shouldn't just be putting in a call i should be folding or three betting ace queen offsuit definitely strong enough to put in the three bet that's what I decide to do, and Greg is going nowhere. He defends his open. We are going heads up out of position to a flop, which comes decent for us. King, queen, 10 with two spades. think this is definitely a board that's going to favor me. I'm going to have more of the kings and queens, and uh, both of us should have pocket 10s. That being said, ace-jack suited and offsuit, Greg can probably have more of, I would assume. So uh, when I bet out for $100 and he puts in the call, Gonna proceed with caution on some turns and rivers, but as for now, I think I have a pretty strong hand in the five of diamonds on the turn. Really shouldn't change too much. I think I need to put some more money in the middle. If he did have a hand like king jack or queen jack, we need to protect our hand. Additionally, if he had any sort of ace five of spades, ace four of spades, like I said, gotta protect our hand, gotta put more money in the middle. That's what I decide to do. Now, Greg, facing a bet here on the turn, thinks about his options. I kind of hope he puts in a call, to be honest. I think I have the best hand at this point. If he folds, we'll take it down. I don't want to see a raise, and lucky enough for us, Greg decides to do that first option and puts in the call. That means we are going off to a river in a pretty decent-sized pot here, first one of the night. River card comes the 10 of hearts. It pairs the board, which honestly isn't the worst card in the world and now removes a lot of combos of pocket tens really shouldn't have kings and queens he could have ace jack and he could have some busted spade draws another possible hand would be a hand like king queen king jack queen jack only the first two of those have me beat i obviously have queen jack beat uh, i decide to slow down and check it over to greg we want to pick off some bluffs as he bets out here for like 700 bucks i'm definitely going to be snap calling if he overbets, we're going to have to think about our options, and uh, if he checks behind, yeah, we definitely would have the best hand at that point. I'm feeling pretty confident about this hand until Greg decides to do something pretty strange, and he overbets substantial here, almost 2x the size of the pot, and he makes it $1,500 to go. I told you guys I was calling a bet here, a sizable one at that, but $1,500 into a $900 pot is pretty strange. It's definitely polarized, so he's saying he either has a nutted type of hand or he has a busted draw. Busted draws could include queen jack. I don't think he'd turn king jack into a bluff here, but busted spades like ace five, ace four, ace three of spades could make a lot of sense. His nutted hands would be anything with a 10 in it, so for instance, queen 10 he could definitely have. Jack 10 would be a hand that makes a lot of sense. Even though there are a lot of bluffs he could have here, there are still a lot of value hands. And for a $1,500 overbet, I'd have to be right here such a large portion of the time. He just really can't be bluffing that often for this to be profitable. So at the end of the day, I don't want to start this session off in a huge hole, and I decide to muck my cards. You can let me know down below if this is a bad fold, as I definitely was calling a $500 to $800 bet. The $1,500 bet put me in a weird conundrum. I decided to muck, and uh, it feels kind of weird letting second pair go there, but... 
Yeah, let me know down in the comments how we played that hand. We're coming for redemption on this second one. Under the Gun raises it up to $30, and I decide to 3-bet with a suited Ace-10 of hearts from the cutoff. We see a pretty vanilla flop here of 6-4-3 rainbow. Under the Gun checks it over to me. I think the villain in Under the Gun is going to have a lot more of this board. He could have 5-7, pocket 4s, pocket 3s. I could have sixes, but uh, yeah, we're gonna check behind and see a gin card on the turn, the Ace of Spades. When he checks it over to me for a second time, this is the green light for me to start betting. I fire out a few blue chips, which are $10 each, and a red chip on top of it. $75 is the price of poker. Villain in Under the Gun decides to put in the call, and the river brings in yet another card good for my range. It's the King of Clubs. He checks it over to me for a third time now. I think we still should go for some value. I think maybe pocket tens would call us. A worse ace, like ace five, ace deuce, stuff like that. But at the same time, I actually decide to check it behind. Uh, I'm not too sure why I did it in the moment, but it looks like I made a great check behind where he turns over ace queen offsuit. So I guess in the moment I thought I'm not gonna get called by that much worse. And I might get raised here by five seven or pocket fours and get called by some better aces, and sure enough, uh, yeah, he turns over that ace-queen offsuit, and we save a little bit of money on the river, but 0 for 2 on the session definitely doesn't feel great to start off the night. When you're 0 for 2, it definitely means you have a shorter than average stack. That's definitely true here. I top up an additional $1,100 to get me on the same playing field as the rest of my opponents, and it's a good thing that I did because I looked down at the ladies from under the gun. Well, actually not under the gun. I decided to straddle it up to $20, and you can see our villain here, Greg in the cutoff, decides to raise it up to $50, a very GTO 2.5x raise. I don't know why he didn't just make it 60, but uh, yeah, we're not going to criticize that. We see a few other players put in the call and the actions back over to me. I love this. There's a $50 open and two callers. How large are we going here? I decide on a sizing of $270, a little bit between five and six times that initial raise. Hopefully someone puts in the call and we can go heads up. I really wouldn't want to go three or four ways with a very vulnerable hand like Queens. But yeah, we definitely want at least one customer and we get our wish when Greg decides to defend his open. Both other players fold. That means we are going heads up out of position to a flop. When you have pocket Queens, you definitely don't want to see an overcard. Greg could definitely be uh, having a hand like King Jack, King 10, Ace King in the spot that doesn't decide to four bet. So yeah, not the best board in the world, but at the same time, I think I'm gonna have more of the kings in my range and more of the ace king, so I don't blame myself for going for a C bet here. Additionally, if I start with a check, it's pretty weak, so I definitely don't wanna start off in that tone. So I bet out for $270, I match that preflop raise, and uh, lucky for us, Greg finds the fold, so we're not gonna be proceeding out of position here in a bloated pot with a second pair. Nevertheless, it definitely feels good to take down the third pot of the night. And that moves us along into 10-7 of diamonds from the low jack. I open it up to $30, and we're going to get called by a villain in the hijack. Is anybody else going to put in some more money into this pot? Yes, we are going to get our buddy Harry, a.k.a. Johnny Bravo, here in the big blind. He puts in the call, and we see an interesting flop of king 7 5 with one diamond. When Harry checks it to me, I'm in between him and the hijack. That usually means I'm starting with a check. No different here with second pair. I don't want to get blown off my hand. I have a lot of backdoor ideas here. Any 7, 10, or diamond would be just gravy. I check it over to the hijack who checks behind, and look at that. The seven of hearts, bang! We turn three of a kind. And better yet, Johnny Bravo bets out into us for $30, a very small 25% bet. We're gonna punish that here. I think I need to put in the raise with the two hearts coming in. At this point, he's representing a strong hand that has a king in it, or maybe an overpair to the seven, or who knows, maybe even a hand like seven six or seven four. You never know with Johnny Bravo. I decide to raise him up and go for value, and I make it $130. The other villain gets out of the way, so no matter what, we'll be playing in position the rest of the hand. But the hand is over, Harry mucks his cards. Unfortunately, we can't get any more money, but let's see how he reacted after the hand. Um, Can I see a river? No, man. Honestly, no, no, no. no. <laughs> yes. Did you get that? Yes. No. <laughs> it's in, it's in high. All right, this next hand, we find ourselves looking down at pocket sixes from the big blind. Under the gun raises it up to $30, and we see a three bet by a villain named Alex. What a great name. He is in the plus one position and three bets it up to $90. The action comes back around to me. Pocket sixes, 
Probably just a fold here, but if we look over at Alex's stack, he's deep enough to gamble a little bit. I have 3,300 in my stack. I decided to toss in one black chip. That's a call, and Under the Gun decides to call as well. That's good news. Better pot odds to flop a six. And uh, that's exactly what the dealer puts out there. It comes Jin, King 10, six, bang, we flop bottom set. And of course, I'm gonna smooth check it over to Under the Gun. He checks it over to Alex, who decides to go for a C bet, saying that he has more of the kings and tens and all that jazz. He bets out for $130. And when it comes back around to me, I debate going for a check raise, but instead, I decide to put in the call. If you're wondering why I decided to call instead of check raise, well, I could have represented queen jack and maybe a hand like ace queen of diamonds or ace queen of clubs, but at the same time, there's not that much that I'd want to be check raising on this board. Maybe a hand like seven, eight of spades, seven, nine of diamonds, just a, a few ambitious check raises there. Nevertheless, I think he's going to have a lot of kings, ace king, pocket aces, pocket ten, so I don't really think check raising accomplishes too much, but instead I put in the call and that brings in the four of spades on the turn. Now, if I'm not check raising the flop, I shouldn't be leading out on the four of spades on the turn, so I check it over to Alex once again, who now decides to slow down and check it behind. Now, would you ever slow down in Alex's shoes with pocket kings or pocket tens? Very, very unlikely with two spades coming out there. I think ace king also would continue betting here, so I think he's pretty capped at king queen, king jack. King 10 might mix here between betting and checking because it's so strong. But yeah, I think I definitely have the best hand here like 98.8% of the time. So when he checks behind and we see the river card, which is a complete brick, the deuce of diamonds, I definitely need to go for a bet. Now, if I'm not check raising my queen jack on the flop, I'm definitely going to have some of those queen high combos in my range here on the river, which means I need to far out and bluff. If I'm bluffing and I also have strong hands as like six, I should go for a large sizing somewhere between four and 700. I decide that the perfect sizing is $600, and before we can even get our hand away from the chips we place over the line, Alec puts in the snap call. We turn over our cards, he mocks his, we are good, and $1,700 coming our way. Finally, some good news on this session. But the only caveat is, though, if he snap called me that fast, could I have gone even larger, something like 2x the size of the pot? We're not gonna get greedy here. $600 is better than nothing. And I'm definitely curious what he had in that hand, but uh, I guess we'll never know. From pocket sixes, we upgrade all the way to pocket kings. I put the $20 straddle out there because I'm stuck and I want more money in my stack. Gotta put that straddle out there to get more money in the middle. Pocket kings on the straddle. The poker gods rewarded me. The villain in the plus one raises it up to 40. It's not a straddle. It's not a blind raise. He looks at his cards and willingly puts in 40 bucks, so kind of strange right off the bat. Cut off and the big blind both put in the call. Let's not forget, I have pocket kings, the second best hand ever created. When it comes back around to me, we're switching those two blue chips for two black ones. That's $200. Let's see how many customers we get. Quick side note, while I was placing out the $200 bet, I accidentally bump into the guy on my left who has been crowding me the entire time. He's asked me to move over. There's just no room to move over, so I'm filming a vlog. Elbows are gonna get pushed into some rib cages, and that's what happened here. But while I bumped him, he shoves me. He shoves me, <laughs> and I've, that's never happened before on a table. It's happened at some bars before in college, but never on the poker table. I get shoved, and uh, yeah, let's just say I have some choice words to say back to him. He doesn't have much left in his stack, because why would he? He's a crabby old guy, and uh, I tell him to put it all in the middle. Let's get it over with, and he can go home. But uh, yeah, he ends up just putting in the call. So the min raise, just putting in the call. A lot of drama here at Resorts World during the WSOP. Maybe he stuck a lot of money like myself in these tournaments, but uh, I guess we'll never know. He puts in the call and the cutoff puts in the call as well. We are going three ways to the flop and I always want to stack opponents, but I definitely want to stack this guy. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. The board comes pretty harmless for us. Jack three deuce with two hearts. Hoping he has a hand like ace jack or queen jack, because we double block the king jack. Really shouldn't have that. Should I get trappy here and start with a check, or should I just try to get more money in? The other guy to my left doesn't have much left, and the cutoff has a good amount, so I ultimately decide to bet half pot here with my overpair. Without a hard knit, the opponents can have more flush draws, and they're definitely not folding for 300 bucks. 
but it turns out nobody has anything. So unfortunately, I am not stacking the cranky old guy to my left. Instead though, we are rewarded with the pot and we're also rewarded in the next hand with pocket nines from the hijack. Low jack opens it up to 30. I come in for a three bet to 120 and the cutoff puts in the cold call, which is definitely a strange play. It gets a little bit more strange here when the small blind jams and I look over at his stack and it's not a small jam. I actually have him covered, but surprisingly not by much, he jams for 3,900. Let's replay this action here. We have an open, a raise to 120, a call and a jam for 3,900. Just your standard 5, 10, 20 poker here at Resorts World. The action folds back around to me and I go into the tank for an excessive amount of time. I'm surprised nobody calls the clock on me. Pocket nines, it's just kind of a weird spot. Do I wanna be flipping in an $8,000 pot? Essentially my entire stack. Could he ever be doing this with eights or sevens or sixes? I think the most likely hands here are the hands people don't like to play post flop. That would include tens, jacks, and ace queen and ace king offsuit. Given that entire range, we're not doing exactly too well. So I ultimately decide to fold my cards. The guy to my left folds as well, and the villain decides to show us. Luckily, he's gonna let me sleep at night. He turns over ace, king, offsuit. So yeah, that was a hand we were flipping against. That was best case scenario. And even though he's taken down that pot, kind of feels good, because I feel like an ace or a king was definitely coming on that flop. Johnny Bravo makes another appearance in this video. Harry raises it up to $30 from the plus one position. Of course, I'm gonna three bet him to 130 bucks. The action folds back around to Harry. He's not gonna let it go. He puts in the call and that leads us heads up in position to a groovy flop of king four deuce with two diamonds. I have the queen of diamonds in my hand and Harry checks it over to me. There's $305 in the middle. I have top pair with a backdoor diamond draw and some backdoor straight ideas. So of course I'm gonna go for a 33% bet and Harry decides not to call. He also doesn't fold. He goes for the check raise and makes it $300. What kind of hands could he be representing with a check raise? Well, there's a lot of them. Ace three, he could also have three five. He could have any sort of two diamond hands. And of course he could have the elusive sets like pocket fours and pocket deuces. I don't think he's ever gonna be check raising with a king. So there are a lot of good hands, a lot of bad hands. I can't be folding to $200 more. I put in the call and we're gonna see what the turn card brings in. The turn card comes about as good as it can get. The deuce of hearts, it pairs the bottom card. Why is it good? Well, obviously it's not a diamond, so the front door diamonds don't come in. It's not a straight card that brings in any of the three five or ace three type of hands. And additionally, it makes pocket deuces reduce all the way down to one combination. So yeah, he definitely has a lot more bluffs now than strength. And he shows it when he checks it over to me. Now that I'm putting him on a lot more bluffs, got to pile more money in and protect my very vulnerable pair of kings. I decide to bet out into the $905 pot to the tune of $600, around two thirds the size of the pot. Probably could be sizing up a little bit larger because Harry's incentivized to put in the call with a lot of those draws and uh, try to stack me on the vlog, considering he has one of his own. But uh, that's not to be in this one. He mucks his cards sheepishly and we're taking down yet another pot against Johnny Bravo. Yo, Harry, what's going on with this cup? So this cup right here, this is, this is like a jackpot. So only the small blind can win it. Wow. And every time you're on the button, you have to put $10 in. It's only this guy so can win So he's incentivized to play a lot of hands. But he already plays a lot of hands. <laughs> All right, you heard the man, the small blind game is on. And of course I'm filming a vlog, I gotta get active. And lucky for me, the game is on, I'm in the small blind and we have a great hand to put some more money in the middle, King Jack of Hearts. We look over at the previous action and Harry opens it up to 50 from the cutoff. A villain in the button puts in the call. There's a ton of money in that cup already, over a hundred bucks to fight for. So of course, I'm gonna come in for a three bet and I decide to go large. If everyone folds, we win a lot of money pre-flop. People put in the call, we have a very strong range. So uh, $250 is the price of poker. And Harry finds the fold. The villain on the button though, he's not going anywhere. He puts in the call for 200 more dollars. So go figure what his button $50 calling range is and then a $250 calling range is. 
Yeah, it's uh, beats me. It could be any sort of pocket pairs or suited connectors. Definitely isn't anything stronger than my king jack of hearts. Still, we're gonna go heads up out of position to a flop. And before the flop even comes out, he pushes all of his chips a millimeter away from the line. Is this a bluff? Is he trying to intimidate me, letting me know not to go all in? Well, the board comes queen eight seven with one heart. I have king high and some backdoor draws. That's not looking too good, but uh, yeah, I'm still gonna rip it in his face. I have king high, the small blind game is on, and uh, sometimes when players do these acts of strength, it's actually the opposite and he's weak. So yeah, we're gonna put him all in. I toss in $800, which has him covered. It's a $700 effective bet. And would you look at that? He pulls all of his chips back from the line. It was a bluff. Was it an angle? Let me know down in the comments. I'm not complaining. He mucks his cards saying he had like six or five high. I don't care what he has. All I know is I'm winning the small blind game and that $580 pot. My first time ever playing that game to be exact and we're one for one with it on the night. We're playing that gangster poker. Let's go. It's approaching midnight, the bewitching hour, and this hand is definitely the craziest hand that I have ever played at Resorts World. It's definitely reminiscent of the Robbie and Garrett hand at Hustler Casino Live. You guys are going to figure out why here pretty shortly. The small blind game is still on. You can see the cup is halfway full. I'm in the small blind and I decide to put in the call. Brandon in the straddle, who is the main villain in this hand, although he's a very nice guy. He's not a villain, but in this hand he is. He decides to check his option. And the villain in the big blind also calls as well. We are going three ways to the flop. And it comes pretty bad for our exact hand. King, queen, jack, rainbow. I start with a check. The action checks through on the flop, bringing in the four of clubs on the turn. All that baloney about bad for my range. Oh, so be it. I bet out for $50 into the $60 pot. I know people are going to be incentivized calling me a little bit lighter because I'm in the small blind and they know I'm going to be going after that free money. And uh, Brandlin puts in the call. I'm not really worried about one call. I'm definitely setting up a blast off on the river. So when it comes a third club, the deuce of clubs, 160 in the middle and half a cup on the button. I'm going to go for all of it and I bet out for $120, just representing some sort of queen jack, maybe a jack four or some sort of two club possibilities. I bet out for $120 and Brandon doesn't think about it too long. He mentions out loud that it's a donation. Definitely don't love hearing that when you have eight high. I turn over my cards expecting to be shown a jack, a weak pocket pair like fives even, or maybe a queen. Definitely not a king at this point. What I'm not expecting to see is Brandon winning this hand with nine high. Damn it. Is it nine high? Nine high. Yes, he called me for $120 with nine six offsuit. I can't even be mad about that. That is crazy. Let's get some freeze frames going here, Lucas, on some of the players at the table. Holy crap, is that the call of the year? That guy marked some cards and he just knew that I had nothing. Nine high, he's one pip higher than my eight high. And uh, he's winning that $400 pot, which is excellent for vlog material here, but, but it definitely feels like I should have got that one through. And I had to interview him after the hand to get my raw emotions and just hear his side of the story. All right, Brandon. Brandon, the people want to know, how'd you do it? How did you make that call? I don't know. Just got to defend the cup. I wanted the cup to get to me. Defend the cup. <laughs> something, something smells a little fishy here. We're going to have to go talk to him outside there and uh, ask for the money back. Thanks, Evan. All right, back to some normal hands. I look down at the ladies once again and raise them up from under the gun to $30. Harry decides to three met me to $150, and the action's back over to me. Harry's going to have a pretty loose three betting range, especially against me when I'm filming. So I decide to four bet him to $350. He doesn't think about it too long and me and Harry are pretty friendly. We've been friends for a few years. He turns over his hand, which is in honor of Doyle Brunson. He has 10 deuce offsuit and he tells me if his cards are live, AKA I don't have an over pair or something crushing him like ace deuce or ace 10, then he'll put in the additional 250 and we'll run it. Of course, I have pocket queens, his cards aren't live, so I just tell him to fold. That's ultimately what he decides to do, and we're going to take down that pot with our four bet preflop, leading us into the last hand of the night, ace jack offsuit from the big blind. We see a raise from the villain and under the gun up to $30. Could be three betting when it folds around to me, but instead I decide to mix it up here and just put in the call, leading us off heads up to a flop, which comes 10-7-5 rainbow. I start with a check. 
When the undergun checks it behind, he still could have all those over pairs. They definitely want to be mixing on this board because I'll have more of the pocket sevens and pocket fives. So can't discredit him from having a hand like jacks or queens just yet. He checks behind and the turn comes the six of clubs. This is definitely a board that favors me as opposed to him. I'm going to have more pocket fives, pocket sixes, sevens, eight, nine, ten, seven, seven, six. You get the point. A lot more of those hands are in my range, but that's all nerd talk. I decide to bet out for half pot and he puts in the call. At this point, he still could be floating me with a hand like ace, king of clubs, maybe a hand like jack, queen of diamonds, something like that. So uh, yeah, when he puts in the call, I'm going to be firing on the river. The board pairs, it comes the five of hearts. It reduces one of the combinations that I'm representing, which is pocket fives, all the way down to one combination. Still, I still have the sevens and sixes and the straights and the two pairs and the boats. So I fire out for a pot size bet of $130. Can't be checking when I have ace high. I got to get him to fold a hand like pocket eights here. And I put him to the test with that pot size bet. He goes into the tank for a while, around 45 seconds before ultimately tossing in the call, which is not great news to end this session. I'm expecting to be shown a pretty decent hand, but it turns out I might have a tell because the last two players have called me down pretty light and no exception here when he shows a six for just a pair of sixes. $385 is going the villain's way and that's gonna end our night. I rack up my chips and head over to the cage, exchanging them for some cold, hard cash. All right, you guys, that wraps up that 5, 10, 20 game we play here at Resorts World. Got in for a lot. Ended up getting out for a lot too. Luckily, I was stuck like $1,400 at my worst there, but ended up losing like 50 bucks. You'll see it on the screen here. So not too bad, but although I still am down on the uh, Vegas trip so far, it's been like four days. I've lost two tournaments, a $1,600 one and a $1,500 one. So yeah, we're down 3K at the moment. Gonna try to get that back in a few more tournaments, a few more cash games. We're here for two weeks, culminating in the main event. If you guys wanna see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If any of you guys play online and you uh, want a new club to play in, there's a few links down below, so go check those out. Good luck on the felt as always, you guys, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.